Hey, this is Kevin Kelly, and you are listening to the Stardom Cast. of our round table discussions i'm your host rob goodwin i'm joined by matt turner as ever and of course the best looking man on the stardom cast it's only scotty wrestling joining us again scott how are you so funny that you say that <laughs> i when i saw someone tweet that i was like excuse me it's a bit now because i had now. i had never I, listen, I listened to the episode. I never heard that. <laughs> I I don't know what episode that was on. I must have just blanked out because I listen while I work. Mm. I never heard anything about me. I don't know what ranking I was, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Like, <laughs> what happened was, is, is we always referred to you as the hardest working man in Joshi. So mm. what we'll do is we'll do the intro. We'll do a little banter. Rob will throw to me what's going on in the Patreon. I said, here's what's released. Here's what's going to release. And I said, we're, we're you know, and Rob said, yes, we're going to be recording um, next week with the hardest working man in Joshi, uh, Scotty Raskin. I said, yes, and the third best looking man in Joshi. Rob's like, are you insinuating that me and you are one and two? And I was like, well, you know, I mean, if Ric Flair and Arn Anderson are calling you to be part of the horseman, you're going to be number three. And <laughs> for some reason, Rob, I always quote Roddy Piper on the show, and I'm going to quote him again because why not? Roddy Piper's the greatest. The why quote not? Roddy Piper. You're not supposed to toot your own horn, but who better to know the tune, right? I mean, <laughs> what a line! What a line! Um, Piper's the best man. He really is. I miss Piper. Um, so obviously, um, we are in five star season. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Um, and after two back to back banger tournaments in twenty one and twenty two, twenty two especially where there seem to be must-see matches every single night. Um, we are on the cusp of the 23 tournament, which, if possible, looks even better. Now, obviously, when you guys are hearing this, which will be Sunday, um, Sunday morning, it'll be the day of the Five Star. We dropped our preview to patrons today, Thursdays we record, and uh, Everyone else should be getting it on Friday. Um, but, Scott, I know that you are actually, just breaking kayfabe for a moment, I know that you are oh, actually... Look at you, insider term. <laughs> honestly, breaking that fourth wall down. Um, I know that, obviously, you're just about to go and uh, record your own preview. I was yes. wondering if we could ask you a couple of questions regarding this year's tournament. Absolutely. So, first of all, first of all, that opening night's card. I'm not going to go through every night, obviously. But it's okay. I know I'm off the top of it. <laughs> well, can I just say your guide on Voices of Wrestling, Chef's Kiss, my friend. Thank you. Thank um, you. I put too much work into it. <laughs> Honestly, <There's> such thing. <laughs> there was one point where I thought it had finished, and then I scrolled down about five minutes later. I was like, "Oh my god, it carries on." Um, but yeah, yeah, absolutely must read if you haven't already. Um, what is the match? on that opening night that stands out to you the most? Because me and Matt were talking about this yesterday, and we've both got different matches that draw the eye straight away. And we actually both differ on what should main event. So I'm intrigued by uh, by your opinion on this. I know my match won't main event. I just know it won't because okay. of a, another match that has a world champion in it. But my most highly anticipated match that first night is Shuri and Suzu Suzuki. Yeah. That is first time ever. These two have been just sitting back waiting, right? They've been waiting for the next big match that they mm -hmm. have. Sure, he's had one big match this whole year. All of Suzu's have been in tags and trios. Like, even her big matches so far have been in tags and trios. Those two are biting at the bit. And 
there's something terrifying about a rested <laughs> Shuri that I am very excited for. Mm. Uh, because, you know, we've had two straight years where she's been at least the MVP of her block, mm. in my opinion. Now she's entering a tournament where she has maybe her most talented block aside her, right? If you look up and down the Red Stars block, and sh- you have a must-see first night, first time ever matchup with Suzu Suzuki. I, it, it just, it jumps off the page to me, as does every other match on the card. <laughs> However, <laughs> that was a very tough choice because, like, I'm pumped for, you know how much I love Mayu. Mm-hmm. Mayu versus Suzuki, I mean, come on, folks. Tam and Saya doesn't miss. Utami return against Mina, who's red hot. I it just it just goes on and on. I could name them all. I'm not gonna, but I would like to. <laughs> it's one of those where you you look at it, and I was looking through. Obviously, like I said, we did our uh, our preview and primer yesterday, and just looking through those blocks, there's no weak link, which is just mental. Like you look at blue block, you've got debutants Mariah May, Sayori Anu. You've got Hannon, who you know is making her second tournament de- uh, appearance, but you know that they're going to pull it out of the bag. You know that we're going to be talking about how how much Mariah May has improved throughout the tournament. Yeah. You know how much we're going to say, oh, Sayori Anu stole the night. And you know yeah. we're going to come out of it talking about how Hannon should be in that Wonder of Stardom picture at the end of this show. Um, mm-hmm. At the end of this tournament, sorry. Um, I'm glad you mentioned my match. Um, Mayu and Hazuki. I cannot wait for that match. I'd love it to main event. Love it to main event. But Matt, I've got a horrible, not a horrible feeling because there's no match. There's no match. Yeah, I I know where you're going. Yeah, there's (laughs) there's no match that's going to be bad, but you know it's going to be Tam and Zaya that main event. Oh, yeah. I... Hmm. I've been thinking about this for a while. I don't know if you guys have talked about this at all, um, maybe on the primer, but you know, there's two pay-per-views coming up in August. And I'm wondering how bold Rossi is to have Tam versus Saya main event twice in the span of three weeks. Matt was talking about this. Because it sure feels like yeah. that's what he's going to be Take doing. my money. Absolutely. Take, I got no problem with it. We, it I got no problem with it. And my only other pitch is if it's not Saya, it's Kyrie, which I've been holding out hope Ooh. for. Time and time again. I just need her to show up once. Just make the match. She's wrestling twice within the next two months in other promotions. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Why can't she wrestle Tam? Those, but yeah, I'm with I'm with Matt. I expect that to main event. Mm-hmm. But you know I'm holding out hope for last year I held out hope for Julian Hazuki to main event. I got it. I got it. I couldn't believe it, but I got it. What a match. What a match. You know I- I'm holding out hope again. <laughs> just for those who haven't read the podcast description or the podcast title um first of all how did you get here um second <laughs> um <laughs> um zek you know we are doing our uh, our greatest five star matches and i might as well say it now because st- uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, because scott's already brought it up hazuki versus julia was literally like i wanted to fit it into my top five matches because mm. like if I know that it was the main event and I won last year, but if anything set the pace for the tournament last year, it was that match because that match absolutely slaps. And uh, I'm not going to talk about it in too much detail in case um, Skull might have got it um, in their list, but it, it's it's literally five A, five B. You know, there was about fifteen matches that I've missed out um, yeah. from various tournaments. It was my match of the tournament last year until, like, very close to the end. That's how much I loved that match. Yeah. I mean, it didn't end up winning, but it's okay. You know, no, I final agree. night cheated. but <laughs> Unbelievable. One of the best wrestling cards ever. Not just stardom. Yeah. Like, and people, I, and people, it's like, oh, this is, like, the best stardom card ever. No, no, this is one of the best wrestling cards ever. And then, like, the fact, like, the finals of the triangle derby was like right up there with it. And then all-star grand oh, queen them with double awesome. super double. All-star Looper. grand queen was cheating to be fair. It <laughs> like, was there's massively. no topping that for a very long time. Like for any show. It's like yeah. one of the, I always yeah. say it's as good as the best wrestle kingdom. As good as the best WrestleMania. Now, Rob, if you don't mind, you just ask Scott a question. Is it okay if I fire one off to our, our guest over here, a quick one. Please do. Go. I would love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Now, Scott, obviously, you're a first of all, thank you for coming on. You're a fan favorite from our fantastic listeners Ooh, of the Stardom cast. Favorite. And Damn. yes, you are a fan favorite, buddy. Everybody, like everybody you loves you. Yeah. <laughs> well, more than Too me. Kind. That's not saying much. <laughs> Anywho. 
I always say I'm the fifth favorite in my house counting the cats. I'm just lucky they let me pay the mortgage. Anywho. I'm just... So Scott, what I want to know, I'm sure Rob wants to know, and what our listeners want to know is why are you not excited for the five star? That's the real. <laughs> Whoa, that, that might be slanderous. Oh, uh, I mean, Scott, you listen to our show, right? You know that yeah. we have a lot of fun on it. Like, uh, I know. We're serious, uh, but we don't take it serious. <laughs> the, like in all seriousness, I know like that's obviously a joke, but there is nothing I look forward to more in professional wrestling than the five-star Grand Prix. Like this entire week feels like I was when I, when I was a kid getting ready for the WrestleMania or something like that. Mm. Like how I felt then. This is how I feel, and it's just it's just day one. It's not the finals. It's just day one. <laughs> We're doing this for two months. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that what's great about pro wrestling, especially our love for Star? It makes us turn back the clock to make us feel oh, when yeah. we're four, or five, six, seven years old. And you know that's the way that I am. I get so excited over you know, especially just the way that stardom has been booked yeah. and the matches the last two or three years. So. Uh, yeah, super excited. I think it, it I speaks volumes about just how exciting this tournament is, that it is running parallel to the G1 Climax. And I know that all three of us do start. one stinks comparably, but that's fun. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, it, As someone who watches it, not even close. Yeah, there's been maybe two must-see matches of uh, our four days. Um, but it goes some way to saying that I am... 15 times more excited for this tournament mm. than I am for the G1. Now, I'm a G1. I watch the G1 every single year. No matter how down I am on New Japan or how high I am on New Japan, I will always sit and watch the G1 Climax. I'll sit and watch every, um, what's it match, every Giro match, you know, for my sins. I'll sit and I'll watch it. But this year, like, the five-star wins just hands down. There's no bad matches and as i said before in the i blocks. said that last year too to yeah be fair. yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely like even the people that don't get talked about from that tournament Ami sorry for example who you know she's in an absolutely stellar block and i think we said yesterday we can't really see her getting more than about four or four six points maybe um simply because of how that's stacked all that she blocks. deserves that's all she deserves <laughs> how dare you absolute like savagery um but like she had a great tournament, but everybody had a great tournament. Um, yeah. you know, even Mina Shira, Mina Shirakawa finished third bottom of the block, and yet I came out of it going, "She's one of the most improved wrestlers in wrestling." You mm-hmm. know, with the way she brutalized Amisori, the way she brutalized Natsupoi. I mean, Natsupoi takes a beating like nobody else. Um, apart well, apart from someone who features in my fourth top match, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So. I think that's a nice enough segue. Now, Matt, I think it's only fair that we let our guest go first. A thousand percent. I agree with you, sir. As always, we're on the same page, my man. We're gentlemen, if nothing else. Um, It's actually devastating because now I have to pick. (laughs) I'll I'll, I'll tell the world now. I have a list of matches and I've ranked one. (laughs) So you're learning as I'm learning what number five is. I, I, I think I know where I'm going anyway, so it's okay. Okay. Um, Thank you for bringing up Julian Hazuki. That was an honorable mention. It was yeah. it's on the cusp, like you said, a five B type match. Um, the same likely goes for Mirai versus Suzu Suzuki for last mm-hmm. year, but I'm not going to talk too much about that just in case someone really loved it and has it on their list. That's like right there as well. Yep. Um, but I'm going to go to my fandom here. And I'm going to pick from the final night of the 2021 Five Star Grand Prix. Shuri versus Takumi Aroha. Nice. 20 minutes of this. It is one of the best draws mm. Stardom has had because the first 10 minutes, you can, you, you know, you can feel they're going to a draw. You can because they're just figuring each other out. And then those last 10 minutes are just balls to the wall, kick each other's heads off. You know, they both do like the kind of as they like to call Mayu zombie Mayu thing. Like they both just no sell Mm -hmm. certain things. I'm like, I know that hurt. You know, you're not fooling me. And it was the perfect match for me where you had Takumi feel like this threat despite not winning, Mm -hmm. you know? And 
I know some of my matches on my list are just going to be me choices, and that's okay. <laughs> this one, I know from a lot of people, they actually prefer this over the final later that night. Wow. I know people that feel that way. I don't feel that way. But that might have been a spoiler. Uh, <laughs> that's a spoiler to no one, Scott. I do love this match, and I think – to feel Shuri's entire final, like that final later that night with Momo, you need to watch this too. Like you have to. It is the best two match one night performance I've ever seen. And I watched Julia last year. She came really damn close. But this was this was Chef's kiss. You have the emotion of Shuri's entire story arc um during that final night. And um even as good as Julia's fight tournament was on that final, which I'm sure we'll all talk about at some point during this list. Um, Suri's tangible legacy storyline um, and, you know, wanting to do it all for her mother. And you could see, I'm so glad you brought this match up because it's it's one that does get overshadowed because that final night, again, was yeah. a banger. We d- we recently rewatched Utami and Tam from that night, which was another great match. Um, we had the second installment of Starlight and Mayu, which was also a really, really good match. Um, but it was the first time that I felt that Takumi was let off the leash, and it's yeah. a singles match. I wish they'd run back. I know that Takumi is made of glass and is held together with a wing and a prayer at a mo- in the moment. Um, which is a shame, um, and hopefully yeah. the new uh, the new Joshi promotion in America takes bloody good care of her. If uh, PW <laughs> Insider is anything to go by, um, but yeah, it's a singles match that I hope we get at some point in the future because those, as you mentioned, Scott, those last ten minutes are absolutely feral, and it's great. Um, Matt, would you like to list off some of your honorable mentions and then kick into what is number five? on your list absolutely real quick uh you know if anybody knows anything about me and listen to the podcast i like plugging other people's stuff scott just mentioned sherry versus uh takumi aroha i will plug scott's stuff because scott has a fantastic stardom podcast stardom road and he just uh, they just released their last episode was sherry's 2021 uh five stars so there you it go it was an excuse it. to rewatch it i <laughs> there took you go. it i happily took it <laughs> someone's gotta uh, do it man someone's gotta do it <laughs> with my list my one and two can flip-flop any time but they're solid as one and two and then three to like 20 <laughs> <It's pretty> much, <laughs> uh again i'm very much like scott pretty much my 5b or my number six was suzuki i just realized they left out a devastating match by the way i'm <laughs> but no i made the right choice but i'm just looking at it now i was like I make the right choice. Sorry, good. Uh, no, you're good. Uh, Hazuki Julia, um, again, very much like Rob. It's like pretty much all of Hazuki stuff we talked about. I, yeah. The last year's, the 2020 tournament was so good that you get a lot of people saying, okay, what are the best matches? A lot of them are on the final night. A lot of them are on kind of that first night, Mariah, Suzu, Suzuki. But I always, when somebody asked me, what are like the underrated matches of the tournament? Two of them I go to immediately is Natsupoi versus Suzuki and Starlight Kid mm. uh, versus Suzuki. The way that Starlight Kid just blisters Starlight Kid's leg, she changes her game plan towards the middle of the match. Uh, I thought the psychology was just brilliant. Uh, some of my other honorable mentions would be um, 2018 Mayu versus Suzuki. Uh, we talked mm. about that when we did the alternate commentary in 2019. I thought that was Mayu. Mayu obviously wins that tournament. I thought that was Mayu's best match. I liked it better than Mayu versus Momo. On the final night, Mayu versus uh, you know Mayu versus Utami. Uh, some of Hana's matches from 2019, the Hazuki match and the uh, the Konami match, the final. I thoroughly enjoy those. One or another one that's a very underrated match. I know a lot of the earlier Stardom uh, matches, especially in the fives, are tough to watch. Are not tough to watch. Excuse me, tough to get to try to watch. But um, match that kind of blew me away the first time I watched it was the final of uh, I believe it was the 2015 tournament, Kyrie and Hudson Envy. I've never seen anything of Hudson Envy, and I think I did it for an alternate commentary or something, and I was, like, blown away of, like, the technical ability of Hudson Envy, Envy. and the match was really good. Cork and Hall was clearly behind Kyrie in the match. Hudson Envy, obviously, was the heel. Kyrie's the baby face. There's one point in the match where Hudson Envy puts Kyrie on, like, a shopping cart and just, like, wheels her around, like, half a cork, and I'm like, should have been a count out, but whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's... So you, Tommy, again, we called it just uh, two weeks ago, partner, you, Tommy versus Tam from the final night. Mm-hmm. Um, there were some really, really good ones. Again, my three to 20 can probably be, be interchanged, but I settled on my top five. 
I guess I will give my number five. That's okay with you, uh, fantastic, handsome gentleman. Uh, my number five will come from the opening night of 2021's Five Star Grand Prix, Mama Watanabe and Mayu Iwatani. When we talk about the greatest feuds and rivals in the history of stardom, obviously, Shuri versus Yutami comes to mind. Io and Mayu comes to mind. And then, of course, the current ongoing and will never end of Julia and Tam. But Mayu and Momo is right up there as well. Um, they pretty much almost face each other every year in the five star. They had a great match in the IWGP Women's uh, Tournament. Mm, they did. Um, one of my favorite World of Stardom Championship matches ever. It's from the ninth anniversary with Momo and Mayu. And uh, Ra, I was, you know, I, I was again, I was making the list today, and I was writing everything down. And as always, I always carry Rob's book with me. And I was like, I think this is my number five. Let me just kind of just go through, a, you know, with the rob wrote and he said he was dead on as always brother with momo was like no nonsense in this this is night one this is my tournament i need to get back to the main event because i was this close of winning the red belt you know the belt that's been eluding uh, eluding me and not only was i this close to winning it it was against mayu the person that i'm wrestling and, and it was just a very sad thing almost close to 18 minutes so when they had the 20 minute time limit mm. and momo does wind up putting mayu away with uh just blitzing her with the kicks and then the uh, the the peach sunrise for the finish, so that was my number five, 2021. Mama Watanabe defeating Mayu Iwatani. This is what I mean. Like you look, especially these last two tournaments. Torn the tournaments going up to 2020. Sort of you look at it and go, there are maybe three or four standout matches, but you get to 2021 and they flip a switch, and you get to the point where more matches are worth seeing than not worth seeing um mm -hmm. and you know that's that's fantastic for us as viewers and momo and mayu from 2021 is one of those matches that you do just forget about not because it's bad but because the tournament was so loaded and i'll, I'll always have a soft spot for the 2021 tournament um you know because i wrote about it um but there were so many matches in that tournament from the middle of the tournament. Things like um, Starlight Kid and Himika had a really good match. Um, Takumi Aroha and Azumi had a really good match. But the matches that sort of there are mid-tournament matches that people forget about. And that's that's uh, part and parcel of tournament wrestling. Um, you know, in terms of my own um, honourable mentions... Um, the entire and I said to this to you guys before we before we started recording, <laughs> just the entire of Hazuki's twenty twenty two run. You pick out any matches from Hazuki's run, especially those first seven matches where she's seven and zero. Um, absolutely brutal the matches she had with Julia, with uh, Mariah, with Mayu. Um, absolutely fantastic and absolutely worth checking out. Mariah also had an absolutely outstanding <clears throat> tournament. Scott's already mentioned Mariah versus Suzu Suzuki. Um, Mirai versus Ami Sori was actually really good as well. Um, and it, going earlier as well, um, there were some matches from the 2019 tournament. I think it's night five. Azumi versus Momo Watanabe. That is a really, really good, brisk watch. I think it goes about 11 minutes, and it's a coming out party for Azumi in this main event scene. Um, so that's really, really worth checking out. It is on Stardom World. Absolutely go and check that out. Um, Hazuki versus um, Hannah from the final night. I'm a big fan of the time limit draw between Mayu and Momo from the uh, from the from the show before, from the year before. Sorry, um, there's literally thousands of matches I could choose from. But what I have done is I've gone back to 2016, and you know that I've got to have a Kyrian in the EO match. <laughs> so, uh, Kari Hojo versus Io Shirai from the 2016 tournament, um, the 3rd of September. The reason I've chosen this is because I've got a real soft spot for this match. I've got a soft spot for Kairi when it comes to the feud with Io anyway, because I don't, if you look back on their feud, if you look back on their absolutely stellar catalogue of matches, whenever it's been the big occasion, whenever it's been the big moment, Kai, we never got her flowers. Like every time they fought for the red belt, Eo won, and Eo won definitively as well. But I don't feel 
like go ahead scott you're gonna say i was gonna I say know, it. go ahead i know i know i know <laughs> you're gonna tell me about the tournament in 2015 I know. no no that's not what i was gonna say oh i was gonna say you were yeah we got it you know because somebody's be yelling like wait a minute Kyrie be EO in the, in the I tournament know. but i know what you meant i know what you meant that's but, not what i was gonna say go on, i was scott. gonna say which, who got the wwe contract first that's true that's true um I mean, we don't you, have to talk about the injury that kept her out. I was no, just no, no, going to no. say, you could argue that <laughs> no, no, it was no. only because he nope. got injured. But, nope. Um, Doesn't exist. <laughs> I de- 2015 was an odd time anyway um, because mm. of the uh, because of the uh, gasoline match and all the stuff surrounding that. Um, and then Carrie got steamrolled by Mako Samoa and then he won it off Mako Samoa anyway as sort of a saving star from uh, the invading force so yes i know she beat her but it was i still see it as a hollow victory um this for me was a really really good encapsulation of their feud of the frantic nature of Kyrie, the destructive nature of Kyrie, and what she is capable of doing to someone um she absolutely bludgeons EO and it's very rare to see EO in such peril as she is in points of this match. You know, you see her against bigger people like, for example, Alpha Female, um, or Nanai Takahashi or Yoshiko. And you know, you've got that big person, little person dynamic and but EO sort of comes back, she does a comeback, she wins, you know, and it's great. Here, because they're both similar in stature, they're both similar in moveset, and they're both friends, there's a little bit more behind the rivalry. And I feel like this match, this match is where you start to feel like Kyrie is Eo's equal. Because I feel like the dynamic between them is and will always be Eo's number one, Kyrie's number two. And this, for me, even when Kyrie won that tournament for the vacant World of Stardom Championship, you still felt like it was only a matter of time before EO got it. Mm-hmm. Whereas here, you feel like Kyrie's number one. That change in dynamic, it's just, I have such a soft spot for this match for that reason. Um, it's Is it the best of their um, series of matches? No. No. I'd argue it's not even top three in their series of matches, but that speaks more to the fantastic way they fought in their feud than uh, the nature of this match but yeah number five is Kari Hojo versus Io Shirai from the 3rd of September 2016 for me um uh, Matt shall we ask Scott let's th- let's go in the same order Scott number yes um I will give you my honorable mentions now just so <laughs> just so I don't forget go for it, good stuff. um so this is not really a joke because I do think it's actually perfect but 2019, Hana Kimura versus, you may think I'm going to say Hazuki, Mowatarabe, nay, nay, I'm going to say Saki Kashima because <laughs> it changed the way she looked at that tournament the rest of the way. She was cruising to that point. Absolutely <clears throat> cruising, no looking back, no struggles. Then Saki Kashima walks out there, beats her in, I don't have the time off. Let's just say under 30 seconds. I think it was like 10, Safe maybe. Maybe 10. Um, it's one of my favorites to go back and watch because you see Hana flip the switch moving forward. She becomes a lot more serious, right? It was, all right, I'm going to win this thing. I'm going to steamroll through this thing. Saki Kashima, that's nothing. Then she get, loses Saki Kashima, and she's like, uh-oh. All right, I got to get refocused. Uh, so that's one of my favorites. It will never make a top five list or anything but i always love to bring it up also you should watch all of hana's tournament it's one of the best star making performances i've ever seen in wrestling mm-hmm. um another one that i really wish i could put on here was tam nakano versus takumi aroha um from the same 2021 tournament that was like tam wrestled the takumi match which is just such a unique thing to think in your head like takumi kind of being the one that has the match with tam instead of you know going down the lore road here um as we love to do with tam right we love the tam road um but that was like it was like 12 minutes long and it was just all action start to finish and uh i won't name any more because there's a very good chance one of them's named uh the rest of the way and i want to respect both of your picks so with that my 
fourth pick is the one that Matt said. Mayu Yutani versus Momo Watanabe. I thought I was going to be the only one with that because that is my favorite rivalry. Um, I know Io Mayu. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Ju- Julian Tam. <laughs> Julian Tam. Yeah, I get it. Like I know there's bigger rivalries, but if you're if you're looking for a great match in the world of start nowadays, you can put anyone together. But if you wanted to put two together, no matter what, to deliver something great, it was always those two. And those two, I felt, pushed that tournament to new heights instantly on that first night. Um, you know, Matt did a better job explaining it, but I'll I'll do my best to give my thoughts on it. Um, uh, at the time, these were my two favorite wrestlers in the world. In the world. And every time they go head to head, I get excited. This is one of their best, if not their best, because you have a determined Momo Watanabe who would kick off her journey to the finals here. You would have a Mayu Yutani who at that point was coming in off of a tumultuous year, right? She watched everyone pretty much leave Star. She watched Fukigan Death at the time, uh, Gokigan Death, get taken <laughs> away from her. She fought. How she ever recovered. I've got then no she idea. defeated all of Uedo Tai just for Starlight Kid to say, yeah, I want nothing to do with you. Uh, I want I want to get to so your level. Good. And I'm going to bring that back up later on. I promise you that. Mm-hmm. Um, but this match was just two of the best going out there and saying, not only are we still at the top of our game, but stardom is the best promotion in the world and you all should be paying attention and when she hits that uh peach thunder was it the peach thunder where she rolled her for the first time i almost like vomited because i was like oh my god <laughs> i was like hey whoa hey hey let's not kill mayu on night one thank you uh just such a tremendous match um i can watch it again and again and again and again and never get tired of it that's how that's what those two wrestlers combined like have for me anytime they match up i'm there right i'm there it's a little different now that we have momo as a heel but or she's always been you know what i mean as an oedo tie heel uh but it's still just as great and that one is forever a favorite of mine couldn't agree with you more i think that's a fantastic summarization of uh of the feud to be perfectly honest um matt oh Go on. Scott, the only reason why I was able to explain Mayu and Momo as well as I did, I had a cheat sheet. And that cheat sheet, sir, is called Living the Dream Stardom's 10th Anniversary in Review by the handsome gentleman himself, one Mr. Rob Goodwin. Or as sometimes we call him Big Daddy Cool Diesel Rob Goodwin. Um, (laughs) (laughs) My number four, uh, we go back to the year 2016. Wonder of Stardom Champion Kyrie Hojo taking on World of Stardom Champion Io Shirai. <laughs> I genuinely thought that would, I would be the only one who had that match. Okay, um, cool. Yeah, I have a feeling that we may. There's gonna. Be, I know there's gonna be at least one match that's gonna be on here that the three of us are gonna agree on, and agree one or two. Yeah. Um, not much more. I can. I'm. I just a little bit more than what you said, partner. Uh, it was a very. It's very rare that we get the Wonder and World. Uh, champions in the same block obviously in 2021 we got it with you tommy and tam but i kind of understand why they split them up you know you kind of want to but at the same time it's like almost like a special traction match where someone can eat a fall and uh they're not going to lose lose the belt or anything like that but um yeah uh eo and the, obviously Kyrie goes for blood early on in the match but then eo tries to pile drive Kyrie not on the apron but off the apron onto the floor and then it's like you hold your breath you're like oh my god no 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 and then Kyrie returns in fire where the two of them are fighting on the top rope Kyrie hits the double sledge chop and usually the opponent will go down towards the ring for the marine spike eel goes towards the floor hanging for the marine spike but Kyrie can't get the marine spike as if it's like not for nothing you probably do more damage to yourself like you're we're gonna land on that one so instead of doing the marine spike she takes eel's head and slap smashes it off the post it's like, what? so good. It's and so then you good. see uh, EO's back is all taped up from obviously crazy, you know, damage that she always does. And the finish of the match is great. It's a uh, insane elbow to the front, insane elbow to the back, and then a really well placed anchor for the tap out. Uh, and I thought that was just absolutely great. Uh, again, this is I could put my number three to twenty in in the same way, but I, I just felt that I needed an EO Kyrie match on there. 
obviously this is probably one of the better ones if not the best ones of the you know the pre uh 2021 tournament in my opinion again subjective um no wrong answer but um yeah i mean this is great but like you said as great as this was they probably had two or three matches better and uh that just goes to show just how fantastic these two are together so that was my number four Kyrie hojo defeating io shirai in the 2016 tournament it's such a good match and it's it's the definitive way that Kyrie beats io like you very re- like io very rarely took a pinball anyway but she lost to uh was... i forgot her name Go i on. forgot her name <laughs> <laughs> that terrible ring of honor women's wrestler oh uh, kelly man. klein not that one but yeah no <laughs> That's a different one i can't remember her name it's gone i'm sorry okay <laughs> it'll come mandy back rose? it'll come back not mandy rose mandy, mandy Leon. Leon. yes yeah. thank you yes, yes. That's Kelly one. klein for all i mean all respective she's actually was very good at the style that she did especially like her matches with mayu yeah. uh because i did she review the, mayu. the 2018 the mayu uh she run mayu. and she uh her her stuff with mayu i mean again i know it's mayu but they always seem to click really well but anywho <laughs> um yeah, apart from obviously that definitive loss against Mandy Leon, which uh, you could argue derailed Eo's entire career. Um, <laughs> I will argue against um, you on that one. I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> What's she done lately? Um, <laughs> you know, to see her eat two elbows and then submit, it it just felt like Kyrie was on the up and up. Um, and it's just a shame that I don't really feel like they ever capitalized on it properly. Um, my number four, um, going back to 2021, which I feel like might be a theme, um, is also from the opening night, um, but it is from Blue Block, uh, Utami Hayashista versus Micah. Um, you talk about couplings that just work, Utami and Micah are that. Um I mean, they proved that when they had the rematch at Tokyo Super Wars, which nobody in the world thought Micah was winning. Not one person. When you've got the potential to have Utami and Shuri to Electric Boogaloo, you aren't having to drop the belt to Micah. But Micah still made that match believable because that's the chemistry they have. And this match on the opening night, you talk about how Momo was sort of forged in steel during this tournament, focused, no bull, for lack of a better term. She was just going to kick the head off anyone Mm. in her way. And this first round match for Micah felt the exact same way. I don't care if you're the red belt champion. I'm going to brutalize you till there is nothing left. And then I'm going to pin you and I'm going to do it in front of all these people. And the way she did it, the swagger she did it with, coupled with some of the greatest selling you are likely to see. I'm sorry, but Utami is an absolutely phenomenal seller. The way she sold for Suri, the way she sells for Micah here, adds a completely different layer to this match. The way she sells that sleeper hold before the Michinoku driver, absolutely superb. It's frantic, it's hard-hitting, it set the pace for the rest of the tournament for Micah and for Utami, who not only proved that she can be a dominant person in victory, it proved just how good she is in defense, which, again, was a hallmark of her entire World of Stardom Championship reign. Um, but yeah, overall, it's a match that gets overlooked. And again, rightly so, because there are so many good five-star matches in Stardom. But it's this match that really kicked off that tournament for me and made me think, oh my God, we are in for something special. And in the same block this year, with Micah obviously being better now, and then you, Tommy, having all of the steam coming off the cage match and then her tour that she did over here in the States. So yeah. People won't listen to me, but I think Utami is like three times better than she was back then. Do you know, I... That's how good she I is. I feel like she's so much more of a star mm. now. And we talked about this during our our first roundtable discussion when yeah. we were talking about whose reign yeah. was better, Suri or, um, or Utami's. And you obviously said you were literally dying on the cross that Utami is going to get the belt again she is going to be a two-time i feel even champion. better about this lately <laughs> yeah. I'm more and that one, I, matt, well me and matt are both of the opinion she's winning this tournament um 
But you look at that blue block. Julia, Micah, Mirai, Utami. The combination of those four wrestlers is very, very appealing in blue block. Um, and I'm looking forward to You say how much Utami's grown and changed. Absolutely, completely agree. But so's Micah. Mm-hmm. And I've got a feeling this tournament could be sort of the thing that shatters that yeah. ceiling for Micah. Whether it is her leaving DDM, mm-hmm. whether it is her doing what Siri did and coming out from the shadow of Julia, um, or whether it is her getting all the way to the final. Yeah. I do- I'd love to see her win it, but I don't think she will. Um, overall, I mean, I think that she's got she's got big potential coming. I've out long been the person with the hot take that Micah didn't fully click for me until 2022, except when she wrestled Uta- uh, Otami. 2022 is when I think she put it all together for me as a fan. Absolutely. But those are Tommy matches. Those were always like, and anytime she fought with DDM. So the Shuri match the night after, you know, where she got mm-hmm. dropped on her neck. It was disgusting. Great match. Um, <laughs> Brilliant match. Uh, yeah. Absolutely great match. But Horrible fall. Great match. Oh, I, I rewatched it many times because she punts poor Mike in the head and then <laughs> she really does. Absolutely brutal. People forget about the in the dojo. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. It's nasty. But yeah, I th- that's it the is. exciting part about this year's tournament. I don't mean to make this about this year's tournament, but the two biggest favorites I think are in the same block, and that changes a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So it's led me to convince myself that someone else can win on the other side, um, which I won't. I won't give away. I, you can listen to my preview if you want to hear that much. Come on. <laughs> got, I got I to gotta plug Patreon, my own they're paying for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're paying for it. I, I've convinced myself if they don't do the Saya tam match on pay-per-view two or three weeks later, Saya does have a shot because part of it's believing who main events that last show, right, that year-end show. I don't know if they see yeah. Micah in that spot with Tam. I don't know. Do you think it's going to be Tam, though? you think retains yeah. and Tam retains to the end of the year? Absolutely. Oh, uh, to defend at that show? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. I think Utami and Tam, I've been pretty locked in on that since the moment Tam won that belt. I said it on here, I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, I didn't yet. I don't yeah, know. Oh, did. I didn't? Okay. One of the 80 other four, yeah, th- 40 I'm sure shows you, did, you yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. I said, <laughs> yeah, a, I said a lot of places. I'll blend I'll, together. I'll, I'll get <laughs> uh, you know, Tell me twice. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll get back on track here. Is that is that a good idea? <laughs> Get to number three. Yeah, go for it, man. Go for number three. Julia versus Suzu Suzuki. Uh, there's few matches with as much hype ever in the five star Grand Prix ever. When the when the blocks were announced last year in 2022 2022 tournament, for those who may not know, uh, I remember everyone just circling, right? And it's a lot like Julia and Utami this year. We all circled it. Like, okay, that's going to probably be the match of the tournament, but we'll we'll wait and come back. It was everything I look for in wrestling. It was brutal. It was emotional. It connected with me as a fan. It would have been my match of the tournament if it wasn't for another match where it hit all those marks differently for me. And I know I'm the highest person ever on the match that I'm going to name next. But this was everything I wanted and more. And they didn't give it all away, right? They go to a 15-minute time limit. They establish in one night that Suzu Suzuki's on the level of stardom's biggest star. Suzu Suzuki's not signed at this time. She's, you know, we're just we're just waiting. We're waiting. I I had predicted many times she would be signed by the end of 2023. Nailed that one. Um which was bold, by the way, because, you know, her love for death matches, it was very bold. Um, but this was perfect in all the ways that I was looking for. You know, the the post-match of them embracing, like, you know, in only a Julian Suzu fashion right there. They're not embracing as in, like, oh, we're best friends now. They're embracing as, like, you know, let's screw you. That was good. But, like, screw you. Leave me alone. And them crying as the bell rings and they're staring across from each other. It's just, like I said, everything I'm looking for in professional wrestling. You get the slaps. You get the nasty headbutts that Julia's, you know, loves to do. You get the crazy moves. And then Julia has to go wrestle later in the night. It was the perfect, and, and I consider 
the 2022 Five Star Grand Prix final, one of the greatest shows ever. Don't, like Matt said at the beginning, does it not just stardom ever? Mm-hmm. And a lot of it's because of Julia's story being told that night. And without that match with Suzu, you can't fully tell that story. Truly fantastic. I don't know if it's a match I can watch over and over because it's so emotional, truthfully. But that's the beauty of it. I watched that one time and it sticks with me. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. What are your self-care non-negotiables? Maybe you've set aside some time away from social media every day. Maybe you find the time to put on your favourite Mayu Iwatani match. Maybe you never skip leg day or therapy day. When your schedule is packed like Ria Goku with kids' activities, big work projects and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Even when we know what makes us happy, it's hard to make time for it. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever. It's so important to make time for yourself, even when life can get so hectic. Therapy is helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to become the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give better help a try it's a service that is entirely online designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge never skip therapy day with better help visit betterhelp.com slash stardom today to get 10 percent off your first month that's better help H E L P dot com slash stardom. And now back to today's episode. I must admit, I completely agree with your last sentiment there because I feel like some of the magic yeah. of that match was watching it live, was watching it live and knowing where that story was mm-hmm. going. Um, and I feel like watching that as it unfolds, still a fantastic match, still a great. And then you follow that with Himika and Micah, um, which was also phenomenal. Um, like it was, and then you follow it with the final, yeah. which was emotional in yep. itself, which I'll definitely talk about later. Um, and I'm <laughs> sure, sure I won't be the only one. Um, but I, I completely agree with you. I don't know if I will ever watch that match again because I don't want to taint yeah. what was a very, very, very well-told story. Mm-hmm. Um, and to hold that off until the final night was a ballsy move from Hatman, and well done, paid off. That's what he does. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, w- there was a reason we have double champion Tam and Tam dethroning Julia after just over 100 days. Um, Matt... Your number three, please. Good Scott, time. you didn't even realize you did it, but you gave me a segue. But uh, yes, my match. <laughs> I mean, we do that all the time. It's just amazing how sometimes that works, doesn't it? Um, my match is also from the final night of the 2022 Five Star Grand Prix. And you may say, Matt, is it Hazuki versus Momo? Phenomenal match. No. Honorable match. Is it Micah versus Himika? No. Phenomenal match on my honorable match. This is the one that handsome Scotty Edwards just said. No, but an honorable mention. My number three is Mayu versus Starlight. Dude, all right. No, I got to cut you off. That's my number two. I'm not even going to sit here and wait. <laughs> it's my number <laughs> Oh, three. my. I thought for sure. <laughs> and I think I, we have the same one and twos. So this this is actually lie. incredible <laughs> because I thought for sure no one was on the same. Le- like, I, I thought I just loved that match I, because I was like, oh, my Mayu fandom took over. So I'm just very happy that everyone's naming it. Let me, I guess, well, let me explain why I liked it. We might as well just yeah, take it you know, and go for that match. <laughs> I'm just going to go wide into I liked, loved it, yeah. liked it, lo- liked it, loved it, loved it, yeah, absolutely yeah. loved it. And then I'll tag you guys in. And if you want to add on, you know, add on more sprinkles and chocolate yeah, syrup and whatnot, it. by all means. Um, with us being giant stardom fans and we watch all the shows, it makes us appreciate mm-hmm. matches like this more. What I mean by that, mm-hmm. at least for me, is you see Starlight Kid 
really gearing up, especially after the Cinderella tournament. Obviously, she had that phenomenal match with Sai Kamatani for the Wonder of Stardom Championship. My opinion, Starlight Kid's best match ever. Um, and she's building up the leg crusher submission. Obviously, she's got the high speed stuff. She's got the Black Tiger pile driver, the moonsault, but she's getting the leg crusher submission over. Not only over with the with, with where she pulled it here, and the psychology is to on the knee and the Achilles lock. But then if she can't get the victory, she puts the and I'm not going to do it because I wind up tearing my quad. But she puts her <laughs> leg over opponent and then gets in like a choke submission with like the heel over the opponent's throat. So it's a double submission, and I really like that. And uh, Obviously, the match is fantastic for all the, you know, all the fantastic reasons, but she puts it on Mayu. And again, I've talked about this all the time. I think Mayu is the fourth greatest seller in the history of wrestling. Ricky Morton's number one. Uh, Ricky Steamboat's number two. Number three is uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Mayu's four. All due respect to Dusty oh, Rhodes wow. and Kenta Kabashi. That, and again, that's just my opinion. Oh, wow. Mayu selling in <laughs> this and the camera angle where she's reaching for the ropes and then she starts to fade. And then Starlight Kid just does that little twerk. I was like, oh, man, they're going to put Starlight Kid over. She's going to get the big win. And we know eventually it's coming to tell the story. And that's where maybe Starlight Kid turns back babyface or on Matt or whatever. We know it's eventually coming. But I'm like, they're going to do it here. I bought so bought into it when Mayu was stretching. And then all of a sudden Starlight Kid just twerked a little bit on the on the, the choke on the leg crusher. And you see her eyes close and her arm fade. It's one of the many reasons why Mayu is so good is because you're so personally invested into her selling. Again, I think she fourth greatest seller I've ever seen in wrestling. Again, it's subjective. And I always talk about the reasons why. And that's when that's what I and the whole match was fantastic. Eventually, Mayu, the way she just builds her comeback, you know, with the super kicks and the, the moonsault and the superplexes or the, the, the German suplexes and the two stage dragon, the way she builds that comeback is phenomenal. But that's what I remember. There's certain moments you remember in wrestling and in matches. And that's the moment I remember the most. Even though Mayu got the win, Starlight Kid was made even better in that loss, which is great because I think Starlight Kid's two best matches ever are the ones that she lost. Again, Sai Kamatani for the uh, Wonder Belt. And this one is right below it. Again, wrestling mm-hmm. is a sport that even when you lose, you can win. And, uh, the van- the, and the example I always go to, Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 13. People forget that he actually lost that match and then became a megastar, you know, uh, the next year. But uh, that's just the brilliance of that match. Mayu got the win. But again, folks, what I remember is just the fade. And it's just absolutely fantastic match for, again, one of the greatest wrestling shows you will ever see. I'm going to let you go next, Scott, simply because I know of your love for this match. And I feel like if I, t- if I go first, you will explode. <laughs> um, so please... Please go next, my friend. I'm still rattled that anyone said it. <laughs> Just because like, <laughs> I, I obviously believe it's great. It's my number two. Mm. I just didn't know anyone was on the same mindset with me. But, um, you know, Matt made a lot of great points. The camera work, I think, makes this match that much better. Mm. The, yeah. the believability that that could have been Starlight Kid's moment made that much better. Um, and one of my favorite parts of the match are in real time watching Mayu Yutani realize Starlight Kid has grown in the year since they faced off in singles action, right? Five-star Grand Prix the year prior. Mayu, you know, she has a little trouble with it, but she's still treating Starlight Kid like a kid, like a rookie. This match, she puts um, Starlight Kid in the uh, submission that I can't remember the name of uh, that she usually beats rookies with. Uh, the dragon sleeper the yes thank you thank river. you she hits that and starlight kid gets out of it very quick and then the realization starts to kick in and starts to kick in and you know when she's attacking that leg for mayu mayu's like you can just see on her face like okay i i might need to like get a lot more serious because you know you know based off their story mayu iwatani wants starlight kid to beat her eventually but at the same time she's not going to give it to her you need to get to my level on your own. You need to show me that you're ready for this spot. And you felt it. You felt Starlight Kid was inching closer and closer, right? That the leg crusher, leg breaker. Leg crusher, leg killer. Leg crusher. Changes. <laughs> I think it's the black. I killer, always call yeah. it what Desperado calls it, but I try to stay away from that. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I know, you know, she just learned it from. But that was how they built that move up. Right, we knew it was a threat. 
And this is the new move that Mayu Yutani hadn't experienced before from Starlight Kid. So can she escape it or is there going to be a win? And the drama, right earlier in the year, what does Shuri, uh, not Shuri, Mayu Iwatani lose to against Shuri? The leg, the, uh, the, the stretch mouth. Yeah. Leg. And that's in my head the whole time. I'm like, I mean, I, I could see it called off. Why why couldn't I see it called off, right? Um, and then when she gets to that bottom rope, the flip, the switch is flipped, essentially. You go from, all right, that's enough. I'm done with that, to Mayu just, all right, I need to finish this. And she pretty much cleans her up mostly after that. And the key is this. The one move that Starlight Kid could not hit was the Eternal Foe. They got up for it, but she couldn't hit it. What happens if she hits it? Does she beat Mayu? Would that have been enough? We don't know, and that's part of the journey. That's part of the journey. Starlight Kid, does she hit that this year on the final night, and Mayu kicks out? Maybe. And then she has to get that final game-ending finisher, or do they just go to a draw? Is that the next chapter in the story? That's the beauty of this story. We're seeing Starlight Kid and where she's at in her career every time they go head-to-head. And in this moment, despite losing, you felt Starlight Kid was ready. And now we're sitting here and Starlight Kid's a new blood tag team champion and not much else, but you get the point, right? She is ready for the next step. And we're going to see this year, is she ready? Because the moment she goes to a draw with Mayu Yutani, I think we can all start to believe in that wonder reign, in that world of stardom title opportunity. I'm not going to say reign yet, but that wonder of stardom title reign. I think a lot of people have long picked her to be ready for that spot. But to me, beating Mayu, that's as much a title as the wonder or world is for her. And that was like a title match. There were no stakes in that match. Neither of them were advancing. You know, win or lose didn't matter. That's how great that match was. It didn't need that. It it hit on every point, like I said, with the Susan Julia match, but to the highest degree because that story is that much deeper, that much greater in the world of Star. Very well put. Very well put. Um, obviously, it's mine. <laughs> um, I am going to lower the tone slightly by saying that the autocorrect on my phone has changed Mayu Iwatani to Maui Wars. Um, so yes, number three is Maui Wars versus Starlight. How'd that make sense? Um, um, brutally, apparently. Um, um, it's matches like this that do reward you for watching stardom re- like on a regular mm-hmm. basis. Like you, If you follow the story of Starlight Kid and Mayu Iwatani and that phenomenally booked storyline with Oedatai where Mayu went through all five members of Oedatai only for Starlight Kid to turn around and go, I don't want anything to do with you, I want to surpass you. Just, oh, just booking perfection. That was brilliant. Um, To then have the final night of that five-star Grand Prix and have, I love the symbolism of not only did Mayu beat her, but Mayu, at the same time, stopped Starlight Kid getting through to the final and then overtook her. So she is physically above Starlight Kid in the block as well as in the pecking order and everything else. Just beautiful. And then we get to the next year where Starlight Kid has another chance to beat Mayu Iwatani. Takes her even further. Um, and that camera work was phenomenal. We talk about great camera work in wrestling. Um, that Osprey and Ibushi spot from uh, Corican Hall back in, I think, 2018, um, which has now been done to death. But, you know, that first time they did it, perfect. This is one of those moments. And because you're watching stardom on a regular basis, you are, you're almost going, right, we're having a passing of the torch here. Starlight Kid is going to beat Mayu. Um, I do think Mayu goes back. I do think Starlight Kid goes back to Mayu. I do would think that she will turn face one, not until she surpassed Mayu, because that is her entire story. Otherwise, what's the point? Mm-hmm. What's the point in the fate? What's the point in the heel turn? Um, I don't think Starlight Kid beat her on the final night no. in this tournament either, um, because if I'm Rossi, I want to drag this out. I want to properly drag this story out. For me, I don't think Starlight Kid beats Mayu Iwatani until she beats her and wins the five star Grand Prix. 
she either beats Mayu to win the five star Grand Prix or she beats Mayu for the red belt. I feel like that is the symbolism, that is the the passing of the torch that you need. And I think at that point, Starlight Kid can put aside all those feelings and a, and turn face if that's necessary because you know she is hugely over despite being a big a big heel. Um, but this match is the encapsulation of their feud in every way that Matt and Scott have put in better way than I ever could. Um, but just for the fact that we talked about the emotion of Susan and Julia, this is emotional, but for completely different reasons, like Scott said, and it does reward you for watching stardom, for watching those storylines that aren't put in your face every single week, but they're subtle, they're running under the radar, and you know, you remember them, you remember those moments, and I think that sums it up perfectly. Um, now, because Scott has jumped the gun, because he couldn't contain his adulation for this match. Matt, do you want to do your number two? I'll do my number two, and then we'll throw I have back. a feeling that we all have the same one or two, and probably mixed, because I know what Scott's number one is, uh, and it's I know and it's, I think it's your number one. Go this way. Your number one. number one. Uh, so yep. these two matches, my one and two, can flip pretty much on a daily basis. I think just because I know it's Scott's number one, and I know you pretty darn well, partner. It's your number one. So I just put it as my number two just to kind of be different, even though it seems like a lot of these matches we have the same. That means we have really good taste, folks. Um, Absolutely. My number two is the finals of the 2021 five-star Grand Prix, Momo Watanabe and Shuri. Considering the fact that, uh, as Scott said, that Shuri went 20 minutes with Takumi or Roja, and the fact that Momo was supposed to wrestle Julia, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, gentlemen, on that night, uh, I still think the match, you know, just crazy, just crazy to think about on um, I love every aspect of wrestling, but I'll take the realism. You know, the real is why all Japan 90s is my favorite era of wrestling. But these last few years of stardom is coming up pretty close. Um, just the two of them just kicking each other, like back and forth in the middle, like to have a stalemate. Where I always say Shuri is like the best, maybe like striker when it comes to putting like three or four strikes together. But if you want that one like Mirko Krokop kick to knock you out, Momo may have the one best striking power. Maybe the most powerful kicks I've ever seen in stardom. I mean, she throws... Just that bit jeepers, creepers. But then, like, Shuri's pointing together like her striking. And then when it gets to a point where Shuri may not be able to withstand too many of these mid-kicks, she goes to a bread and butter, and that's her grappling. And it's just back and forth with the two of them just beating the crap out of each other. It's a 50-50 match. If this goes to a time limit draw and you're doing UFC style, they may count They may count this one as a full draw. Uh, but in the end, it's Shuri that winds up getting the win with a whole bunch of blitzing kicks and then the ruin for the win and just uh absolutely fantastic must see must see match and a must see tournament the whole show i mean very much like 2022 they they outdid it it's like the 2021 tournament is must see the final night is you better see it and then the final match is like the perfect icing on the cake of a great night of wrestling and then a great tournament and then somehow they outdid it in 2022 and they may help do it again this year but uh yeah that was um again i know you gentlemen will probably elaborate on it more um, but that is my number two, Momo Watanabe and Sherry from the 2021 final of the five star. Um, but my my number two, um, which I do happen to know might be Matt's number one, um, the final of the 2022 tournament, Julie versus Tam. Um, this instantly heated up a feud that we hadn't necessarily forgotten about by any stretch of the imagination, but had been left to cool off. And then within moments, they had reignited a fire in each other. Sometimes there are people that just bring out the best and worst in you. And these two bring out the best and the worst in each other in the best possible way, whether it's the brutality, whether it's the emotion, because I stand by the fact that very, very few people do emotion like Tam does. I feel like Tam can connect on a very emotional level, whereas you've got Julia, who is stoic, but has just been emotionally spent by this war with her old friend, Suzu Suzuki, who she's had to put in the rearview mirror if she is to continue on this journey. And now she's got to fight her biggest rival in stardom. Like, we're going through a rogues gallery here of Julia's past. You know, we've beaten Suzu. So, well, we've gone to a draw with Suzu Suzuki. We've put that away now. That feud, with, well, for now, this feud from Ice Ribbon. And now it's the feud of the present. You know, 
not forgetting the fact that Tam's the reason that she had a head shake. Tam's the reason that she had this ultimate embarrassment of losing in the main event of Budokan, having her head shaved in front of 3,000 people. And here, Julia manages to right the wrongs from Budokan and does it in such a captivating way. We all knew by the, fa by the final, we all knew Julia was winning. Like those last few people that had those sort of thoughts that, oh, Zumi's going through. No, Julia is winning the tournament. Don't laugh. That was my was wife. She was wrong. she was dead sad on <laughs> Zumi. She's got a Zumi going to the final this year. Well, Saki Kashima laughed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Zumi comes out in, in new gear on her birthday and gets rolled up in two minutes. Eliminated her. Just love it. Um, but everyone knew Julia was winning. But yeah. I think it speaks absolute volumes of the feud of these two ability to yeah. connect with the crowds, to connect on an emotional level, that they were still able to do this captivating 17-minute bomb fest. Mm. And it's explosive, and it's made even more, even more exciting by the fact that Julia has just had this completely different match with Suzu Suzuki. Overall, this is the perfect encapsulation to what was damn near a mm. perfect tournament. Um, and had Azumi won the tournament, it would have been perfect. But damn that Saki Kashima. Damn that <laughs> birthday. Um, on her birthday. Oh, it just, love that just Saki. makes it so much better. The only way that would have been better is if it had been like a full Mayu 17 yeah. seconds. That was the only way that would have been better. Um, but overall, like this is this here is what five star wrestling is is all about. If you want an essence of what the five-star Grand Prix is, it's Julia versus Tam from that final. Um, it's a match that, whereas before I'd say, oh, I, I might not be able to watch that Suzu Suzuki match again because it might take some of the magic out of it. No. This this has, on face value, the brutality I love. Going slightly deeper, it's got the emotion. And going even slightly deeper than that, it's got all of that backstory from Julia's year from March onwards. So, overall, perfect match um matt it's time for number one um i don't know why i said max i meant scott um uh, scott it's time mm. for your number one pick my friend to the surprise of no one what's your number one five star grand prix match of all so it, it, it's sherry versus momo watanabe i i do yeah. i do want to admit yeah. to the world now because i'm a gentleman the reason I didn't say Julian Tam, which was going to be my number five, is because I didn't want to. I didn't want to spoil the conversation. I want. I wanted to hold it. Thank so you. that would have been my five. <laughs> but I was like, yeah. I don't want to spoil this. I'm just. I. I know it's later for everyone, <laughs> so I'm going to wait because ultimately we're talking about five great matches, no matter what. And I said to myself, I'm just mm. going to pick another final night match from another year that I love. That would be probably 7B, exactly. and it worked out. But let me talk about Shur Shuri versus Mo Watanabe. To me, it is the essence of a tournament final to the highest degree. And when I say that is if you look at the greatest G1 finals, right? Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Kota Ibushi. Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Shinsuke Nakamura, for example. Just two out there. Trust me, there's many more. I didn't even say Kenny Omega's name. That's the... That, I know, I know. <laughs> but when you look at the greatest G1 finals, you can feel that either person's going to win. And because Julia was removed from the 2021 Five Star Grand Prix, like everything shook up in everyone's minds. They said, all right, well, sure, he makes sense. But, okay, for many, the favorite was out. It could be anyone. And Momo Watanabe at this point was still the leader of Queen's Quest, was still a very serious contender, right? She had that killer game face going into that very first match with Mayu Yutani. Momo's good at giving things away. That made me feel like from the very, very get-go, oh, she's going to make a run. And she got to that final. The only thing that even remotely hurts this match a perfect five-star match is that we couldn't get Momo and Julia early in the night. That is the only thing. Just because I think we would be talking about Momo's five-star final night in the same regard that we've talked about Shuri's, the same regard we've talked about Julia's. 
but it doesn't matter because they told it a different way. They went with what kind of killer is Shuri? What kind of main event star is Shuri? We already know she can go 43 minutes. So that doesn't matter. Time's not nothing for her. She is, she has the stamina. She has the combat skills right you know the ufc i always like to bring her ufc career into this because i do think that just puts her in a different level Validates as an me. overall Validates competitor validates it, yeah and i'm thinking in my head here all right it's pretty even to me no matter what and the way they set the match up made it perfect right they didn't do this last year i really wish they did but they did backstage promos with momo watanabe and shuri you have Julia next to Shuri, pretty much getting her water. Shuri's like, yeah, we you good? All right. Momo is, you could just see the killer in her eyes. She's like, no, I know what I have in front of me. I'm ready to go. You know, and they get to the ring. And I, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it, folks. That's how great this match is to me. I get goosebumps thinking about it because it's that, it's that special. It's that perfect. It's. It's everything you want for 18 minutes. Bomb after bomb after bomb. Devastating kick after devastating kick. Matt said it perfectly. Momo probably has the most brutal, if not heaviest kicks. And when I say that is every time she hits them, you can feel it as a viewer. There is a thump there that only Shuri can match. And when they're just trading back and forth, Throwing each other with uh, it's just I almost got speechless. There is a bug in my face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> way to ruin my uh my very dedicated uh response here, but it's everything I look for in a tournament final to the very end. It is a perfect five stars, it is the perfect conclusion to a perfect tournament for Shuri. It is the conclusion of one of the greatest nights a wrestler's ever had in Shuri. It's everything I love about stardom to the very end. Because Momo had a shot. You could believably have Momo win that. I don't think anyone bats their eyes. Because who's the world champion at the time? Utami Haishishita. That That works for either winner, right? That works for Shuri. That works for Momo. It all makes sense. Ultimately, it was Shuri who won, and it was that crowning moment, right? It was, she's earned this. That match with Utami earlier in the year pushed stardom to a whole new level that I don't think anyone was ready for. And that tournament was the tournament to say, not only am I great for one match, I am the person ready to fly the flag of stardom into their year 2022 which many will agree is their greatest year to date and that's what this tournament did it brought us to that it's very special to me it's a very special match and you want to talk about a match that has rewatched you can rewatch it time and time again that's this one you don't need to go into it live like to feel the emotions you just know it's a tournament final we need every bit now i'm going to shut up Thank you. Very well done. Um, welcome to Scott's TED Talk. Um, yeah, absol- absolutely incredible match and incredible um, summary from yourself. Um, Matt, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. My number one is Andres Miyagi. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My number one is, uh, again, it, 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 it'll flip flop between uh, the Momo Sherry match and then the final this past year's with uh, Tan and Julia. But that is my number one. 2022 final Tam versus Julia. Um, Rob, obviously, you dropped a lot of knowledge on it and uh, gave the match just due. Uh, it's just due. But I remember Scott, me and you last year. I jumped on your podcast and uh, we talked about you know the final night of the five star. We talked about how you know they did a, that whole entrance way and the production quality of Stardom's really come a long way. Mm-hmm. And uh, the whole entrance way and everything was really, really good for everybody. I mean, it was fantastic. It was top star. It was five star, if you will. How about that? Um, but how they did the finals where they had both Tam and Julia on a pedestal Ugh. with the screen 
coming out and then them coming down from the pedestal where I completely forgot. Yeah, where I remember you even said like Julia that night looked like the biggest star, not in stardom, not in women's wrestling, but wrestling in general. Mm-hmm. And Tam was only a step or two behind her. Just the star power that they gave that match. And then you add on Tam coming down with the uh, the one on half of the goddess of stardom uh, uh, tag champ. So she had the belt like kind of crisscross on her. I think just added to Tam's presentation and just the aura of a lot of wrestlers in stardom. Obviously, Sherry has it or she's going to kill you. Tam has that aura with her entrance. Obviously, Julia, you, Tommy. Mayu has a completely different aura that we all love. But uh, another <laughs> story, friend. We can do loads of podcasts yeah. on that. But then, yeah, the match was an absolute bomb fest absolute and it's my favorite match between the two obviously the hair versus hair match is great even the uh the two matches where julia uh beats tam for for the uh, for the wonder of Stardom championship match um the the vacate uh, the when arissa had to vacate the title and they met in the final and in the rematch they're both fantastic matches but i think they just get overlooked because of the hair versus hair match uh this match and then uh even at All Star Grand Queendom, um, their uh, yeah, their match was fantastic, but I like this match just a little bit better, um, because it's yeah, they're just throwing bombs. There's no feeling out process. There doesn't need to be just because they know each other so well. I mean, doing tiger suplexes off the top rope after uh, you know Suzu Suzuki and Julia, as Scott mentioned, went to a war, and Tam had a really solid match with Saki as well. You know, on the nights of it's it's a match that gets overlooked because of just how phenomenal that match was, but it's not like Tam had a had a night off either. But though they're just and then they're doing suplexes and dropping each other on their heads on the ramp and Tam does the Muda Tokyo Dome run with the violent shooting and then it just ends the most violent way possible with just an absolute gross gross Northern Lights bomb. It's a match that I watched five or six times before. It's a match that I've done alternate commentary on this uh, podcast for the Patreon as well. Um, and there's actually one kind of funny part as many times as I watched as the match is over. And I noticed little things that maybe certain people don't. Uh, so Julia goes to like check on Tam to make sure she's okay. And she reaches her hand out to give like the Iggy, you know, make sure she's okay after they drop each other on their heads for like 15 minutes. <laughs> and then like Tam like goes to give her the Iggy and then throws Julia's hand away as it's like, I'm not going to break kayfabe here, their sister. You know what I mean? I'm going to make it look like I, I hurt you. Which I'm assuming they two of them must be the best of friends backstage for how much they beat the crap out of each other. How can you not have that mutual respect but uh yeah again my one or two will flip flop uh, on a daily basis but they're pretty much linked one and two but uh just kind of the sake of just being different i put tam and julia from last year's five star as my number one and considering the fact of how good the 2021 final was how good the 2022 final this year's final has a lot to live up to and i think that they'll probably hit the mark i just don't see any way you know uh, with the Chutami and and uh, Saya, whether it's Utami and Hazuki, which I know you have, Rob, I wouldn't be shocked if they do Utami Shiri in the final. Uh, just to be like, holy geez, we're getting that match, and they're both former, you know, winners of this tournament, and we'll have a first time winner. Or if they want to go that route and give us Utami and Mayu, I don't, you know, or if it's a Mike and Hazuki, I just don't see any way that this. I'm not going to say it's going to be better than the 21 or 2022, but I think the final this year is going to be just as good, and we will have tic-tac-toe three in a row gentlemen of <laughs> just must see five star matches in the five star so uh that's my take there good sir i've told you matt hazuki has been in the block that the winner has come from in every tournament she's been in so uh now is her time now is her time the winner is coming from blue block again um i mean obviously i'd, I'd love to make a joke about how my number one match is that four minute match between Mayu and Deku Yama Sam from 2020, where they just read, her, read Mayu's book for four minutes, which was just brilliant. Um, it legitimately was one of the best Fukuk and Death matches I've ever seen, um, which admittedly is a low bar. Um, but, Rude. Um, but I do encourage you to go and watch it. Um, it's like it's a low bar, but you, go, you should go and watch it. You Put absolutely that on a poster, should. Folks. Proper, Honestly, I watched it three times. It tickled me that much. Um, but no, um, obviously it's Mama Watanabe versus Yuri. And um, similar to before, I think Scott has done an absolutely phenomenal job of summarizing just why this is stardom at its peak. Um, it's not one of the greatest five-star matches ever. It's one of the best matches ever. Um, irrelevant of promotion, irrelevant of stardom, it is one of the greatest matches ever. Um 
from the moment Suri enters the arena for this match, you can tell that she's ready. You can tell the emotion on her face. And she starts the match cagey. She starts the match slowly, deliberately, um, very much like she's stalking a prey. But the problem is that that prey is Momo Watanabe, who is a very similar striker to her. And then as the match progresses, you see the match getting more frenetic, and it's this roller coaster of emotions. You know, and Momo Watanabe does fantastically in this match. And I know I'm going to talk a lot more about Suri than I am about Momo, but Momo, this match is nowhere near as good if Momo isn't in it. But the fact that Suri's story fuels this match, the fact that Suri is so desperate to win this match, so desperate because it's a means to an end to get back to that red belt picture, to complete that arc, to complete that story, to right the wrongs of Yokohama when Mayu beats her for the red belt. All this emotion pent up in this one person. And you get all of it during this match. You get the slow start. You get the stoicism that we, you know, that we have, a, that we see a lot in Suri. We see her have this cold kill look in her eye, but she lets that mask slip the longer the match goes because it's becoming increasingly likely that Momo is going to pull it out of the bag. Because as Scott said, Momo had a brutal tournament. Like, we saw what she did to Mayu on that first night. The most resilient wrestler on the stardom roster. You know, she's got the the strongest neck in the history of the world, for <laughs> God's sake. Like, how that woman is still standing, I've got no idea. But Shuri realizes about halfway through this match that this is not a foregone conclusion. And we see that, we see that in the way she wrestles. She lets that mask slip, and we got all the emotion then in her face. And this emotion fuels this match so much. We knew that this was going to be a good match because Suri's a fantastic wrestler, and Momo Watanabe is a great wrestler. But you tap 95% of the stardom roster on the shoulder, they're going to give you a great match with no backstory. But what makes this match so special is Suri's unique arc. The fact that she wants to honour her mother's legacy, to be as brave as her mother. You're willing her to win. Mm. You want so much for her to win. And every time Momo kicks out, or every time Momo gets a near fall, you are living and dying with every single near fall. And it is perfect wrestling theatre. You want wrestling theatre? You don't need 40-minute tribal courts. You don't need repeated segments over and over again. You need a 20-minute match with a tangible backstory, a story full of real emotion that people can connect with. And honouring a relative who clearly meant so much to Suri, clearly and obviously, and let's, let's face it, she'd be incredibly proud of Suri. But just everything behind this match escalated it from a fantastic in-ring contest to the perfect encapsulation and perfect finish to this tournament. Um, yeah, Momo Watanabe versus Suri. Final of the 2021 Five Star Grand Prix. If you haven't already seen it, what are you doing? <laughs> go and watch it now. Finish watching this podcast or listening to this podcast and go and watch it. It's on Stardom World. Just go or watch listen it. to the podcast Just... while you watch that match. When I have the best of both worlds. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Look at the three best looking men in Joshi. I, I, that's it's a bold claim, and it's probably Russell wrong. Gow's but... in Joshi. Come on. Exactly. Russell yeah, Gow's we're shooting. Gow. We're shooting. Beautifully Scott. stylish man. <laughs> Beautifully stylish man. I feel Those like hats don't hats. wear themselves, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone has got a head for a hat, man. Especially that I mean, hat. I... Or those <laughs> exactly. many hats. Not those many hats. Do you reckon he's just got a cupboard yes. of hats? Like, yeah, they're just, all just... resting on the SWA title. <laughs> no, they're not. That's in the skip. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's never coming back. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good hat. Matt that's what Scott's saying. It yeah. is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice looking um, Guys, what can I say? It, 
honestly, it just bring it back. Just put it on Mariah She's May. She's sitting there waiting. Bring it back. Keckle's also sitting L- there literally. waiting. Literally. <laughs> There's so many people. There's so many people. Just put it on it. Rather than doing the IWGP Women's Championship and then creating the exact same championship well, again. that's New Japan's fault. We can't. We can't. <laughs> Bloody ghetto. Um, anyway. <laughs> anyway, we could do a whole podcast on that. Oh. On the fact that Mayu's held that belt since April and not defended it. But anyway. Let's not get off. Topic. We got to get Scott out of here. Um, Scott's got another show to do. We've so. got to get Scott out of here. Um, but, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. Did you agree with our picks? Do you think our picks are stupid? Let us know what your picks are down below. Don't your tell me if mine are stupid. Five star matches. <laughs> Don't tell Scott his are stupid. Tell me and Matt that Scott's yes. are stupid. Um, and uh, we'll let him know. <laughs> um, but no. We'll break it to him softly. In all seriousness. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. We'll just we'll type in just hook the leg and then do it because then we know we've softened him up. Um, but guys, thank you so much, Scott. It's always a pleasure talking to you, my man. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, I'll be here anytime you need me. As I like to say, especially this season, five star season, I'll always be there if you need me. Uh, I make oh. sure I'm open, mostly because I am. But. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i'll act i'll act like it's just because of the five star season but in all seriousness thank you so much for having me i love talking old five star get to be excited for the new five star uh it's gonna be an incredible tournament this year ready to, the, for my top five list to be completely ruined by the end of it uh because there's Absolutely. like three matches i gotta add but it, that's how great this tournament is and you know I'll, I'll give my little pitch here follow me at scotty wrestling if you want to uh see all my thoughts on the world of it's usually just stardom i'm not gonna sit here and lie um if you want to see my thoughts on stardom <laughs> go follow me there that's where all my content's posted it's easier than me going through all the content because i lose track mm-hmm. um thank you very much very subtle plug i uh, <laughs> i love it um yeah, go and follow him because he is a fantastic follow. The We don't call him the hardest working man in Joshi for no reason. The man, I, I honestly do not know how you sleep or where or when you sleep. I don't. Um, <laughs> s- sleep is He's for the week. I can sleep um, when I'm dead. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but no, we, we appreciate it. Thank you again to everyone that's listened. Thank you to all our great patrons. You guys are the absolute best um enjoy the five star grand prix because obviously this is going to drop on the 23rd of july today today is the five star grand prix first night look at that card how exciting um we hope you enjoy it we'll be back next month with another round table uh we don't actually know what the round table is going to be maybe it should be the top five matches from this year's five star no because we have to do that the five star is not over until the fall Oh, damn it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's not You're over. excited. We're just trying it to get through July. It's a loaded month on the Patreon, brother. Or just the starting Jesus. cast in general. <laughs> um, but no, if you haven't already, followed us on social media at the Stardom Cast. You can follow me on Twitter it's at Real Rob Goodwin. Matt Turner, sign us off. Absolutely. Sir. Questions, comments, anything I can do for you fantastic folks, let me know. Matt Turner OF on the Instagram and or the Twitter is the best way to get a hold of me. If you want to shoot me an email, perfectly fine as well. The Stardomcast22 at gmail.com is the best way to get a hold of me via the email. Folks, we cannot say thank you enough for all the fantastic support that you show us on a daily basis. It really means the world to us. Uh, once again, Scott, thanks a million for coming on. Always a pleasure having you, my friend. Like I always say, folks, it's just not my podcast. It's our podcast because we're all together and everybody's different. Everybody's special. Hook the leg. <laughs>